So today we finally reach lecture 50 in the optimization series and uh, today I'm going to discuss a somewhat different topic in our response surface method chapter and that is about the orthogonal arrays. We will call these OAs in short and again I'm Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now we have seen that an enormous amount of computer time is typically required when you use a CCD design. If you were to even use the 2K design, it would need enormous amount of computer time as the number of design variables becomes larger. So this process is highly dependent on K. Now if you wanted to use the 3K design, it would be more expensive compared to even the 2K and the CCD design. Now we can ask the question, do we need so many sampling points when K becomes large? Or can we get away by a fraction of the factorial points? Because we have seen before that the primary reason for this curse of dimensionality is the huge increase in the factorial points. That's this 2 to the power of k or 3 to the power of k increases dramatically as k increases. And so this is the question which is answered by the so-called fractional factorial design. And in these designs, we are not going to use the full factorial, but we are going to use a fraction of the factorial designs. And we will see if we can create a response surface which is reasonably good so that we can perform optimization or even design of experiments or quality control problems by using these particular fractional designs. So these fractional factorial designs, sometimes known as FFE, let us investigate or sample the design space with a fraction of the total number of points which would be required by a factorial design. For example, the 2K, the 3K, the 5K, and so on. And one of the advantages of fractional factorial design is that they can capture the linear models quite well. And in some cases, you can actually do a second order fit through a fractional factorial design, create a response surface. And these also work out reasonably well when optimization is performed. So again, like I've mentioned several times in this chapter, this curve fitting using response surfaces for optimization is more of an art than a science and therefore fractional factorial design have been used by many people. Now Taguchi has developed a family of FFEs known as the Taguchi OAs. And these have been used in a plethora of situations, particularly in the industry where quality is important. So in fact, the name Taguchi and quality have become somewhat synonymous and you will find a lot of literature in this area. There is a good book by Ross on this particular subject. Now, we are going to look at what exactly this OA means. And one of the issues which happens in these OAs is that the factors are calculated independently and this is a fact which gives a lot of power to the OA concept. Now we are going to look at some particular examples of these OA, the L4, the L9, and the L18. These are some of the lower dimensional values. And one of the advantages of using this kind of approach is that it provides a systematic way to conduct experiments with a fraction of designs compared to factorial design. So let's get started and look at one of these particular designs. So this is a design where you have three design variables x1, x2 and x3 and you have four points 1, 2, 3, 4 in which you run these designs and there are two levels for 
each of these design variables which are put as minus 1 and 1 in terms of our usual coded variables. Minus 1 would correspond to the low level, 1 would correspond to the high level. Now one of the things you can check whenever you have an OA presented to you is that x i t x j should be 0 for i is not equal to j. So we will just see this in the next slide. So for example, if I take this, if I take any one of the columns, let's say I take x1 column, minus 1, minus 1, 1, 1, that's here, and take the dot product with respect to the next column, minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1. Let's say here we take this dot product, so minus 1 into minus 1 is 1, plus minus 1 into 1 is minus 1, plus 1 into minus 1 is minus 1, and plus 1 into 1 is 1. So the net result of this dot product is 0. Similarly, we can take the dot product of this column with this column, which is done here, and again we get a 0. The third case we take is this column here, which is this one. Take the dot product with this column here, which is this vector, and again this comes out to 0. So here we are clearly seeing that this x i t x j are 0 when i is not equal to j. And this is a factor which is particularly beneficial as far as the construction of the OA is concerned. Now we see that these two columns are independent. The levels of the two corresponding variables are also linear, linearly independent. And their effect on the response can be found independently. So these are some of the characteristics which come out from the particular feature which these columns possess. So let's return to it now and look at it more from a practical aspect of how to use it to get a response surface. So let's say we have a three design variable problem. Now, if you want to use two levels, minus one and one, you could go to the 2K design. And the 2K design would give you two to the power three, that is eight points, which you recall are the vertices or corners of a cube. Now, if you look at this particular design here, the fractional factorial, you are using only four of those points or vertices of the cube. So essentially you are using a fraction of the 2K factorial design. And this is the whole concept behind fractional factorial. And therefore, by running your experiment at only four points or running your simulation at only four points, you could fit a three design variable through this situation. Now, certainly if you are doing a linear model that would work out quite well, and sometimes people also try this with second degree model and it sometimes works out quite well. And it would depend to some extent on the nonlinearity of the functions you are considering. And in many cases, engineering functions are reasonably linear or mildly nonlinear in a small neighborhood. So if your neighborhood is small, you could probably get away with a fraction, fractional factorial design and this is something we have found frequently in our research. Now we extend this to one more design known as the L9. So here we have three design variables, x1, x2, x3, and this design gives us nine points. And now these points are at three level. So you have the minus one, zero, and ones. So again, recall that minus one would be the low, zero would be the medium, and one would be the high. So now if you take this problem with three level design and think about a 3K design, you would have a much larger number of design variables. So the 3K design would give you 27 points to sample the design space. That's three to the power three. However, the L9 
takes only nine points. And therefore, you can start seeing that some of the aspects of the curse of dimension, dimensionality can be mitigated by the use of these particular designs here. Now, this particular situation would become even better if the number of design variables went up, which we will see in some of the higher design variable situations. So let's consider this case of six design variables at three level. And this, this is the L18. Now here you have these 18 points. You have these as the coded variable. And again, you have these at three levels, that is minus one, zero, one, which of course correspond to low, medium, high for each of the design variables concerned. Now, here you can see that this is a reasonably large size problem, six design variables, and you are able to sample this by using very few points, 18 points in this case. So let's now compare this with the design if you had a full factorial type situation. So let us say you decided to take a 3K design. A 3K design with six design variables would require 729 points. And you would be taking a 3K design because you are considering three levels on each of the design variables. Now compare this 729 points with 18 points. This is a huge difference. And therefore this is the power of these fractional factorial models to perform quite well in these situations. Now again, here in this lecture and in the book, we have covered some of these examples, the L4, the L9, and so on, 18 being the largest one. But there are many more such designs out there in the literature, in the web. You need to search the internet and you will find various resources where people have given out these designs and there are certain methods to calculate these design. Now, as a user of optimization, you may take one of these designs and use it to fit your response surface model. And in many cases, these may help you to actually perform an optimization using response surfaces with a large number of design variable rather than take a 3K design, which would become too intense in terms of running your experiment or simulation. And this example has clearly shown the problem that running your simulation at 729 points would be extremely time consuming compared to running it at 18 points. And let's say you fit a second degree curve through it and then you use it for your optimization process. It is likely in some cases that you may get a pretty good result with your fractional design. You may get a very good result with your 3K design, but again, that is something which may not even be possible in many realistic situations. So again, this was one more piece of information or technology which is now in your repertoire. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll come back with the next video soon. See you then.